it. So um, I'm Stephanie, I'm from School Food Matters and um, we are a charity. And the reason we're a charity with the mission to ensure that every child enjoys fresh, sustainable food at school and understands where their food comes from is because back in 2007, my children went to a new local primary school in the, talking about suburban and leafy, in the London borough of Richmond. Before coming back to London, we lived in Sydney, Australia. The children were born there. And they went to a little Montessori nursery. It was like a little sort of dream, a little Montessori nursery at Bondi Beach where they grew organic vegetables. Then they went to an outdoor learning space, chopped up the vegetables and shared it around an outdoor table. And that was my experience of school food. So here I am, I arrived back in London with my two kids. They go to this outstanding primary school in, uh, in the London Borough of Richmond. And I walked in for the school visit and the uh, school manager said, sorry about the smell, that's lunch. And I thought, gosh, how can this be in, in, in leafy Richmond? And this is what we saw. So <laughs> this is the moment. I, it doesn't matter how many times I do this presentation, there's al always an audible gasp. And I just thought, my goodness, we can do better. Like many of you in the room, you just think small children need to be fueled to learn. And this is what they're being given. And it was really interesting. I had no experience of campaigning, lobbying. I had 20 years in film production. I didn't, I didn't do work in the third sector. I didn't really understand how it worked. But I was a parent who loved food. We lo we'd always gardened. My parents gardened. So it was just such a weird thing for me to experience that the idea was this was going to keep kids going through the day. So I started mooching around to see why there was a problem. And there clearly was. It wasn't just me being a fussy parent only 20% of children across the borough were eating school meals. It was bust, the system was broken, there wasn't any good reason for it. And the reason that kept coming back was, well, we can't cook in Richmond because we don't have any kitchens. So again, naively, I went in there and said, but has anyone had a look? You know, maybe there's something we can do. And then they sort of scratched their heads a bit around the local authority and said, oh, well, we actually haven't had a look for some years. And I said, well, how many years? And I think it was something like 20 years they'd had this sort of, um, since the local authority used to cook over there, they used to have this sort of perception that no kitchens can't cook. So they were shipping in a frozen ready meal from a factory in Wales, heating it up and then chucking it in the bin, basically. <laughs> and there was a, a small proportion of children that were actually eating it. So, you know, I can't pretend it happened overnight. It was four solid years. We had to wait until there was a break in the contract and an opportunity to write a really ambitious spec. So that's possibly the most important thing to sort of pass on today if you're in a local authority contract or even if you're a single site contract. Getting that spec right is really important. And being ambitious. Because, log because contract caterers are really competitive. And they want to have the edge on their competitors. They want your business. So if you're ambitious, you know, let, ask them, what can you do for us? And the interesting thing, to go back to that argument about no kitchens, um, after all of these sort of jumping up and down, it took the contract caterer only invested, I say only, but it was 30 primary schools, 80,000 quid to get them all cooking fresh. Much of the problem was small equipment combi ovens, all the things we've heard about, but it wasn't rebuilds, it wasn't massive, great big new builds, it was just making the most of the space they had. So that's sort of the sli slightly boring bit about procurement, but um, the good news is this is what they eat now. So gold standard Food for Life catering mark. Have you all heard of the catering mark? Yeah, a bit of nodding. It's a, it's a really useful kite mark. There are issues with it, but you know, if, you, if you're looking for a contract caterer, they need to understand the catering mark as a, as a kite mark. So we're talking free range chicken, we're talking seasonal veg, we, we, you know, things are appearing, will only appear on the plate if they're in season. And that's a great piece of education for the children as well. So the other part of what we do is food education. Because partly because, gosh, you go completely bonkers if all day you did procurement, procurement, I'm sorry, it just moves so slowly. And there's also another part of the story, despite having really lousy school meals, 
In 2007, I heard a head teacher from a London primary school say that children in his school couldn't recognize an onion. Didn't know what it was. We're not talking about an aubergine or anything sort of Mediterranean. We're talking about a good old onion. They didn't know what it was. They couldn't name it. So I saw there was a really nice piece of education to go in with it. So we, how I put it, devise, develop and deliver food education projects. And we do that with partners. So the one I'm going to talk about today, in fact, I'm going to show you, wait for it, the world premiere of a film about young marketeers. And the reason I've chosen to show it today is because Charlton Man is star in it. They're front and center. So Young Marketeers with Borough has been going now for five years. We've slowly extended the project from two primary school sales, which is a summer and harvest sale, where children grow vegetables from seed, to grow produce, to sell at fair share, to raise money for charity that feeds vulnerable families. So it's a really lovely circle of food education. Um, I think Charlton Manor have probably been with us from the start. This year, for the first time, we launched a project for secondary school students because we see there's a real gap for food education projects in secondary schools. And I'm pleased to say Chris Malik, who's sitting here at the front, he's from Bread Ahead at um, Borough Market, and he's heard about what you do here. So he's here today to hear about all the great stuff that can happen in schools so that he can help by getting his bakery to devise some sort of projects for you. So make sure you talk to Chris because he's looking for great ideas from teachers. So I'm going to shut up and hopefully if the magic works, we should be able to show you a film. So sit down and relax. Well, you are our young marketeers today and I just want to introduce Keith Davis from Borough Market who is very kindly hosting our Young Marketeers sale today. So I'm going to hand you over to Keith. Thank, Thank you. you, Stephanie. Welcome to Borough Market, you know, on this beautiful day this morning. And this obviously is a culmination of some work you've been doing over the last three or four months, I know. Uh, we're delighted to have you here, uh, certainly from our point of view of the trustees, but also the traders. The traders themselves, they love the fact that the young children like yourselves are getting involved in sustaining the, the growing of fruit and vegetables within London. This bell has had a tradition, okay, since 1755, where it says, before trading starts, the warden shall ring the bell, okay? Today, you're going to be the warden, okay? So it's down to you to ring the bell. We ring it three times, okay? My name's Stephanie Wood and I'm founder director of the charity School Food Matters. We founded in 2007 and we're a campaigning charity improving school food, but we also run food education projects teaching children where their food comes from. The response of the public is always really, really positive because it's these children are utterly beguiling. They're incredibly charming salespeople. And everybody I've met here today thinks it's really important that children understand where their food comes from. They need to know what seasonal produce is about. They need to know what it how it tastes different and fresh. And learn teaching them how to grow it is a massive life skill. is Chris Collins, I'm a horticulturist, I work a lot with kids gardening, I suppose I'm best known for being the Blue Peter Garden, and also my work with organisations such as School Food Matters. But I love the hands-on workshop, I love the idea of getting the kids touching the soil, sowing the seed, it has to come from them, it has to come from them, and I think that's, ultimately that's what we're about, we're about getting kids to do stuff, and to come it all the way through and see them today, with their produce, selling it to the public, I, I find that very inspiring. You know what, last night I was at a massive conference, horticultural conference, with all the great and the good, the CEOs and the head of RHS and the head of HTA, and I spoke about this, and their big issue is 
you know, where the gardeners are tomorrow. And I said, you know what, I am on the ground all the time in schools with kids who every one of them loves it. So for me, my point of view, the real crux of it is how they react. How they react. And in 12 years of doing it, I've never had a kid who's gone, I'm not doing this, this is rubbish. They all relate to it. Surely this gives us a huge base to bounce off. Tell me what you got, fella. Shall we have some marmalade? Marmalade, that's homemade marmalade, girls. Homemade marmalade. Now for 50p. 50p? It's a bargain. Yeah, we also have some sweet chili with a recipe. Sweet and chili, very good. That's right. marmalade. So these yeah. are sweet chili, marmalade. And what about these are forget me nots, are they? Yeah. Yeah. And one spider pod. How much money have you made? We've uh, made a lot. You made a lot? Yeah, I think around like 50 pounds. 50 pounds. So that's what? 400 fair share meals. How are you, mate? Oh, look, he's doing all right. Hey. See this shard? I, I, I know this shard well from the community garden. My name's uh, Tim Baker, head teacher at Charlton Manor Primary School uh, within Greenwich. And uh, today we're coming up to sell our produce, which the children have been working hard at growing throughout the year. And now we're going to come up and sell it. So, Tim, how's it going? It's going really well. We've I mean, yeah. sold a lot of produce. All the shards going. Uh, the potatoes have gone. Beans have gone. Destiny has to do it. Well, what's, what's going on here? What are these? They're cob nuts. Cob nuts? And they came from the garden as well, didn't they? Yeah, Very they unusual. were just falling off the tree. Were they? Yeah. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? And you know that, uh, I will say, that the school that Tim and these kids belong to is one of the most progressive food-wise I've ever been to. You enjoy your gardening, don't you? Yeah. Enjoy your gardening, fella. And they come to my workshop. Did you enjoy the workshops? Yeah. What, what was your favourite bit of the workshop? When we were I've got some meat. I thought he was going to say me. Um, and <laughs> then we learned how to make a pot out of the newspaper. Ah, they say you've got a little newspaper pot. Yeah. Yeah, you enjoyed it. What was your favourite bit, fella? My favourite bit was cleaning up. Was it? <laughs> you could come and work for me, mate. I've always got cleaning up. <laughs> you have a lot of work to do, I tell you. It is, yeah, it is. I'm Mr. Shelley and I work at Charlton Manor Primary School. And I, I'm the gardener there, so a full time gardener. And we work in the, the secret garden with all the children, growing, growing all our produce that we've got on sale here today. The, the number one pastime in the garden is digging. So it doesn't matter what you're growing in the bed, they're more interested just purely in digging, most of them. And you can give them a spade or a hand trowel, and they'll spend the whole afternoon just digging for nothing, just literally. It's like playing in the sand. But yeah, I mean, in terms of getting the kids outside, into the uh, environment and actually learning in the garden. So the whole ethos of the school is to actually, the kids learn by actually experience. So rather than sitting in a classroom and doing their maths or their English or their art, they're coming out into the garden, not just to do gardening, but to do all the subjects. So you'll get children coming out with their rulers and measuring the greenhouse or, or counting the number of stones they can pick up. And it's for all ages as well, right from reception right up to year six. I have bought some amazing products from the wonderful children of South East London. I have bought Riverside Chili Jam, which cost me all of £3.50. Wow. It was given to me as a taster on a crisp, and it was very nice. <laughs> and it tastes like it had been picked yesterday. I think it has been. Yep. gather round. Has everybody had a great day? Yeah. Has everybody sold lots and lots of fruit and veg jams? Yeah. Well done. Now you know what we're doing here today, why we're raising money. Who can put their hand up and tell me who we're raising money for? Fair share. Fair share. Okay. So here is the moment when I tell you how much money we've raised. Now I want you to know that in the summer we raised 300 pounds. For harvest, we have raised £452.26. Wow. Yay! Congratulations, because now, with my, with my trusty calculator, I'm sure your four-time saving is very good, but those are quite big numbers. So I'm here to tell you that that money you've raised will buy, will create, 1,800 meals for people who use Fair Share's wonderful facilities. 
So a huge thank you. That is a lot of lovely meals. Good, isn't it? And I, I have to say a big thank you to the Community Channel because um, small charity, we're only tiny um, and we can't afford to make films and they came along and um, made that film for us, so I'm really grateful. Um, I think that's probably my time up, Tim, but I just wanted to say a big thank you and keep going. The nicest thing for me coming back year on year is to hear from people like Karen who have come here and learned and gone away and Miles and I have worked long and hard uh, with Department for Education, School Food Plan, and we sort of burrow away and do all the stuff we do. So when we actually hear from a teacher that has taken those lessons and done something brilliant in their school, that's really exciting. So thank you for coming, and I hope you'll have me again next year.